ever looked at that brownish red liquid in your first aid kit, the one that gets dabbed onto wounds, and wondered, what is this stuff really? That's betadine. You've probably used it dozens of times, maybe without giving it a second thought. But did you know that this common antiseptic traces its power back to a humble chemical element? That's right, iodine. In today's video, we're taking you on a behind-the-scenes journey to explore how betadine is made from iodine, why it's effective, and what makes it such a trusted item in homes, hospitals, and clinics around the world. This is one of those stories that mixes science, history, and everyday usefulness, all packed into a little brown bottle. Welcome to the fascinating process of turning iodine into betadine, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. Betadine is a brand name for an antiseptic solution that contains povidone iodine, or PVPI for short. It's widely used for cleaning wounds, prepping skin for surgery, and even treating infections like sore throats or minor burns. So what's povidone iodine? It's a stable chemical complex of iodine and a synthetic polymer called polyvinyl pyrrolidone, or povidone. This combination helps iodine become less harsh on the skin while still packing a powerful antimicrobial punch. Iodine on its own is effective, yes, but it's also a bit aggressive. It can irritate skin and evaporate quickly. So chemists had to find a way to tame it. Enter povidone. Before we get into the lab magic, we need to talk about where iodine comes from. Iodine is a naturally occurring element. It's found in seawater, seaweed, and certain minerals in the Earth's crust. In industrial settings, most iodine today is extracted from underground brine wells in places like Japan and Chile. These wells contain salty water loaded with iodine salts. To extract iodine, this brine is treated with chlorine gas, which converts the iodine ions into elemental iodine, the kind you can actually see. The iodine forms a purple vapor, which is then condensed back into solid crystals. These deep violet crystals are your starting point for making antiseptics like betadine. Now here comes the chemistry. The elemental iodine is combined with povidone, a water-soluble polymer. This polymer acts like a carrier. Think of it as a sponge that holds onto iodine and releases it slowly over time. To make povidone iodine, the two ingredients are mixed in water under controlled conditions. It's not as simple as stirring it like soup. This process happens in large stainless steel reactors in pharmaceutical manufacturing plants. Temperature and pH have to be carefully maintained. The goal is to ensure that iodine binds properly to the povidone molecules while staying stable and potent. The result? a dark brown liquid that's less toxic than pure iodine and much more effective as an antiseptic. That's betadine's active core. So why not just use iodine alone? Well, while elemental iodine is great at killing bacteria, viruses, and fungi, it has a few problems. It evaporates easily. It can sting and it can stain the skin in a way that makes you look like you've been in a paint fight. By attaching iodine to povidone, scientists gave it a slow-release system. Povidone holds the iodine molecules and gradually lets them go as needed. This makes the antiseptic effective over a longer period of time and much more comfortable for the patient. The polymer also makes the solution water-soluble and easier to rinse off which is important in medical procedures. Once the PVPI complex is made, it's not quite ready to go into bottles. It needs to be purified. The solution is filtered to remove any impurities or undissolved particles. It may go through vacuum drying or other stabilization steps to ensure a long shelf life. Next comes quality control testing. 
In pharmaceutical manufacturing, this stage is crucial. The solution must meet strict requirements, exact concentration of iodine, absence of contaminants, correct pH level, and even color consistency. Only after passing all these tests can the solution be moved to the packaging stage. Betadine isn't just made in huge vats and poured into bottles like juice. The packaging process is highly automated and sterile. In clean room environments, the liquid is filled into amber-colored bottles. These protect it from light, which could degrade the iodine. Then, bottles are sealed, labeled, and batch-coded for tracking. The final product you see on store shelves is the result of multiple steps strict safety standards, and a whole lot of chemistry behind the scenes. Betadine has been around since the 1960s. It was developed by Purdue Frederick Company and quickly gained popularity for its effectiveness and safety profile. Hospitals, militaries, and even space agencies stocked it. Yes, NASA used Betadine in first aid kits aboard the Apollo missions. That's right. The same stuff you dab on a scraped knee has also been to the moon. Over time, Betadine has evolved. Today you can find Betadine as a scrub, ointment, solution, throat gargle, and even vaginal douche, all containing different concentrations of povidone iodine. Each variation is tailored for specific medical needs, but they all trace back to the same core formula, iodine plus povidone. And it's not just for humans. Betadine is also used in veterinary medicine to treat wounds on animals. The reason Betadine works so well is that iodine disrupts the proteins and enzymes inside microbes, killing them almost instantly. The slow-release nature of povidone iodine means it continues to work long after you apply it. This makes it ideal for open wounds or surgical sites where infection risk is high. Plus, iodine doesn't cause antibiotic resistance, unlike some overused antibiotics. So, betadine remains one of the most reliable antiseptics out there. Now, while betadine is incredibly useful, it's important to use it properly. It should never be ingested, and it's not meant for deep internal wounds. Prolonged use can sometimes affect thyroid function, especially in people with iodine sensitivity. Environmentally speaking, iodine should be disposed of responsibly. Industrial producers follow regulations to ensure iodine waste doesn't contaminate soil or water sources. So there you have it. A deep dive into how a naturally occurring element like iodine becomes a life-saving solution like betadine. It starts in the earth, passes through labs, gets stabilized with polymers, and ends up helping millions of people each year stay safe from infections. From sea brines to space missions, Betadine's journey is a great example of how simple chemistry, done right, can make everyday life safer, cleaner, and healthier. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.